Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, my name is Alan Day. I'm a desk. I'm a designer here in the desktop team at Red Hat. I'm a member of the Fedora Workstation Working Group, and I'm also uh, active upstream in the GNOME project, where I'm a UX designer and formerly a, a member of the board of directors of the GNOME Foundation. And I'm here today to talk about F35, uh, Fedora 35 Workstation. Uh, so, you know, this is a this is a release party, so I'm going to keep it pretty light. I'm just going to talk about all the cool stuff in the new release. You know, I think we had a really great um, release for F35. Lots of nice new features. We had some really good uh, feedback, positive publicity, and so on. So I'm just going to talk through some of the features that we landed. Uh, talk a little bit about you know how they work, who worked on them. Uh, what's involved, and hopefully you'll be able to get a bit of insight into, into what went into making F35 Workstation, but also uh, how you can get the most out of it as a user. And uh, there's plenty to talk about, and I've only got half an hour, so I'm going to go pretty quick. And um, once I've finished going through the slide deck and I can actually see something else, I'll I'll tune into the Q&A. So if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in there. Uh, I should say, you know, I am, I'm a UX person. I, I'm a designer. So there's going to be that kind of slam to the talk. Um, I will mention some of the under the hood kind of technical details, but you know, that's not my, that's not my specialism. So there's a bit of a kind of UX focus here, but I'll try and do uh, a bit of the technical stuff as well. Just don't ask me too many questions because I'm liable to get that wrong. Okay, and and all my slides are screenshots because, well, um, you know that's just the way we're rolling today. So power modes. Uh, this was one of the headline features, I think, for F thirty five workstation. And uh, you've got here a screenshot of the the power settings as they appeared now in the new version. And you can get a sense of how this works, this feature works. We've got three settings, performance, balanced, and power saver. And there's still the same three modes. They're accessible in the system status menu in the top right. You can go in there and see which one is active, and you can change between them. And you know these do kind of like um, what it looks like they do. Like, Performance mode makes your computer run faster. It also makes it use more electricity and it makes it hotter and, in my case, noisier. I can tell when this is on because my fan starts spinning. Um, but this is useful if you're doing anything that's resource intensive, like you know, playing games, or if you're if you're kind of compiling software or something of that nature, this will make the performance faster or snappier, and it's useful for that. Um, balanced is pretty much your standard um, performance. It's what you would expect your, your machine to run like if you weren't using any of these settings. And um, then power saver, you know, again, it's somewhat obvious. This will make your machine run a little bit slower but it will save you power. So if you're running on battery and you want to get the most out of your battery, if you put on power saver, it will it will run a bit slower. And um, you know each of these three settings that the, the origin for this is, you know, more or less the cap capabilities of uh, modern hardware. You know, um, these three modes are often available in laptops um, through the firmware is something that's made available to us by the, the vendors, by the hardware manufacturers. And this, this feature is, is hooking into that, is making that available, um, is making that pre-existing feature accessible and integrated into the rest of the, the, the experience. 
And if you're running Windows, you would already have this. So a lot of the work that went into this, it came about from the hardware enablement team, uh, Red Hat, who, you know, they're aiming to make sure that you we have feature parity with um, Windows. So if you're using the same device on Windows and on, with Fedora, you will get access to all the capabilities of that, that device. And, you know, we're working with partnerships with hardware vendors to make this happen and, you know, particularly working closely with Lenovo. That's something we're really positive about and is working really well. And this feature is an example of the kind of results of those kind of partnerships. So this is working with the firmware, working with the hardware. And what it's essentially doing is, you know, it's changing your clock speed. It's, um, uh, it makes the CPU run faster or slower. Um, Power Saver does a few extra things. So, um, we, we're not just relying on the firmware for this. We're doing, trying to do the right thing in the rest of the system. So when Power Saver is active, uh, we will not download software updates in the background because you know that uses power. So we won't do that. We'll be a bit more aggressive in uh, dimming the screen and also uh, blanking the screen, you know, making it go to sleep. Because again, you know, the, the screen is uh, one of the main things that uses power in the device. So we're trying to do the right thing. Uh, the other thing to say on that note is, you know, although these three settings are available and you can switch through them as you'd like, the this is expected to work automatically as much as possible because, you know, while somebody might want to manage this themselves, often you're going to forget, and we want this to to work by itself as as you would want it to. Um, so for performance mode, what that means is automatically enabling that when you start to do a resource intensive activity. So, like say in the gaming example, when you launch your game, we want performance mode to automatically enable. And then when you finish playing your game, we want the performance mode to go back down to balanced. And we have some initial support for this in F35, but it's going to need building out. It's going to need a bit more work. So but that's very much the ambition. And the same is true with Power Saver. So what we will do is when, if you're running low on battery, then Power Saver will automatically turn on. Uh, and then when you plug in the AC, it will go back to balance. So, you know, one headline feature of F35 is that it is more, um, you will get more life out of your battery. It performs better in low power situations, which you know, I think is a, you know, a great improvement as the kind of thing that people want to see from their machines. They just want it to work. They want to get the most from their hardware. And, um, you know, I think kind of power saving is definitely something where there's more gains to be made and having this in place, this is something that we can build on and make more and more of the experience respond to dynamically to the, the um, battery charge level. Okay, so that was um, power modes, the first of quite a few new features that we had in F35. Um, the other, uh, one of the other big things that landed for F35 was a revamped software application. So this is like the app store where you can go and browse apps and install them and install your updates and all that kind of thing. And you know, a lot of work went into this for the latest release. Um, you know, pretty much every part of the UI was uh, improved in some way. So what you can see here in this screenshot, you've got the, the landing page. This is the first screen you see when you start the app. And this got an update. So you can see we have these, these six new categories there, like create, work, play, and so on. They replaced a previous longer set of categories, which were a bit more functional and plainer in appearance. So this is much more engaging, it looks nicer, and it's easier to use because you have fewer categories to search through, there's less digging, and it's, it's, you know, it's more engaging. 
Uh, the other thing you can see that we did here, we changed the presentation of the app tiles down at the bottom there. So they now include a description of each app, which you know, previously we just had an icon and a name, which made it, it, it wasn't always easy to know which app, what an app did. So now you can easily see that with this information. Another major area of the UI that got updated were these application detail pages. Uh, now I know this screenshot is kind of big and it's a bit hard to make out the detail, but hopefully it will give you a bit of an overview. Uh, so this was completely transformed again. Um, you know, we've got a bigger icon, bigger title, bigger screenshots that you can easily flick through. Um, then when you get down, you get to this kind of um, tile-based layout, which what that's doing is it's trying to present each app in a way that's kind of engaging, it's meaningful, it's turning all the metadata that we have about that app into something that you can easily scan and get a sense of what that app is like. So we've got tiles for the, the size of the download, for the permissions that the app has, what kind of form factors it's appropriate for, and the age rating. And each of these you can you can click on and get more details uh, if you want to dig into the metadata. We've also got tiles that show you the release history, so you can see what was new in the latest version. Uh, you can get information about uh, whether the app is uh, it's a free open source app or whether it's proprietary and what the license is. And then, you know, handy links for to get to the website or to Nate or get involved. And altogether, I think this just gives you a much more engaging uh, presentation of each app. It's, um, it's easier to scan, it's easier to read. It's overall just a nicer way to learn about the apps that are available to install. And I, I think this turned out really well. It was, it was a lot of work. Um, there's a lot going on here, but I think it's, it's a really nice way to, to find out about the apps. I don't have screenshots of everything that, that was changed for F35 here, but you know, the, the repository settings window that was completely revamped. The, all the other bits of UI, like the installed list and the updates, that was all completely revamped. And under the hood, there were efficiency improvements and some stability work that went on as well. So altogether, uh, there was, you know, this was a big effort and I think this experience is better than it ever has been before. I think that, you know, as we've been testing this, we've seen that there are some issues outstanding and um, there are a few um, kind of reliability problems there. But um, those are going to be looked at. So there's a plan in place for that. And we're hoping that with F36, those will be ironed out, fingers crossed. So I think we're on a really good path with this. And obviously, it's a really important part of the experience. So it's, it's good that this is getting the attention that it deserves. And it's a solid release for F35. Um, speaking of software install, uh, something that we did a lot of work on in the Workstation Working Group was the third-party repositories. And in case you're not aware of what this is, these are some extra repositories that we make available um, for users to enable. And it's to cover those cases where there are common things that people really need to install or often need to install, which for one reason or another, Fedora isn't able to provide themselves. So it's things like Google Chrome or um, the NVIDIA driver, the proprietary NVIDIA driver. And all of this is optional, it's all um, opt-in, but you know, particularly I think for new users who um, maybe aren't aware of 
all the, the you know the third party repositories that they're able to go out and manually install this is really good right because it means that you can start using fedora you can enable these repositories and you can get access to pretty much everything that you might need there's none of those you know those missing pieces and it just makes the it makes workstation much more accessible to a wider audience so for f35 we've improved this this feature we changed the way that it it works we've changed the way that the repositories themselves are enabled and that means that we can have this uh the screenshot which is the the page in initial setup that's the thing that you go through after you've installed workstation and that makes it much much easier to enable these repositories you don't have to go and dig for it after installation it's right there one click and move on and you're done so that's really nice. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've expanded the set of apps that are available through the third party repos. We now bring in a small selection of apps from FlatHub uh, that includes things like, I think, Google Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, sorry, and Skype and I can't remember the others, but there's a, there's a handful of apps, common apps there that people often need to install, which uh, now if people want, you know, again, this is opt-in, you don't have to use it, it's, and it's disabled by default, but if people want it there, one click, and they can have access to those apps. And, you know, now that we've got uh, the framework for this installed, I think in future releases, we'll start to add more apps to that list, so you'll get um, access to more and more apps that are um, not in the, the the main Fedora repos. And I should add, these aren't just proprietary apps. Um, a good number of them are, but there are some open source ones in there as well, which for, for one reason or another, we're not able to have in the main Fedora repositories. Okay, time check. Oh, wow. Okay, I need to move a bit quicker. Um, Multitasking, um, another new feature for F35, uh, nice one, people seem to really like this. Uh, this is a new settings panel. You, you can see the screenshot of it here. And this contains common settings for, to do with launching apps, uh, working with Windows, and working with workspaces. And all of the settings that are included in the settings panel are settings that previously existed and were actually supported. You know, they had a settings key, they were expected to work. And if they weren't working correctly, then that would be considered a bug and someone would, would look at those and, and resolve that issue. The only thing was we didn't expose these settings in the, the settings app by default. So by introducing the settings panel, all we're doing is we're making it easier for people that were already using these settings. Uh, you know, it means that they don't have to go and use a third party app or, you know, they don't have to use the command line. So it's just less work. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we're making, we're advertising the fact that these settings exist because, you know, people um, might not be aware of all of them. And these are things that are useful, right? You know, um, you know say the hot corner example, some people have issues with accidentally triggering that, um, you know, depending on what kind of input device you're using or your motor control, that can be an issue. So, you know, it makes sense to allow people to disable that. Or, you know, the same with this active screen edges setting. This is the thing where if you drag a window to the side of the screen or to the top, um, it'll resize it, which is a great feature, you know, something that most people use, but with some multi-monitor configurations that can become an issue. So um, here you can easily disable that if it's if it's getting in your way for some reason. So this is just a way of you know packaging up and presenting features that we already had in a nice way. Um, you know, people seem to really appreciate that. It's it's just a nice um, enhancement. And you know, on, on the development side, <clears throat> not a massive amount of work to do all the plumbing already existed for this. Okay, what's next? 
Ah, mobile network, yes. Um, so this is a new settings panel for mobile networks. You know, this is you've got uh, 3G or 4G or uh, 2G modem. Um, there was previously, we had, you know, we previously had settings for this to enable you to use that feature. It was kind of old and a bit clunky and it didn't have some of the standard features that you people tend to expect from this, like particularly based on what you have on your phone. So that, that old settings panel has been completely replaced by this new one, which is it's more featureful. It's got uh, the kind of settings that you'd expect and it's just much easier to use uh, altogether, just a nice enhancement. Um, this will only appear if you have the necessary hardware, if there is this kind of uh, modem uh, present in the device. That could either be integrated, you know, if you know, you've got laptops with, um, you know, that you can put a SIM card into, it will show up then. But it also will uh, show up if you have a dongle, uh, which, which is, is good to know that you know, we've got you covered in this kind of situation if you don't ordinarily use this kind of network, uh, but you know, it's it's an option for that, for you if you need it. And, you know, personally, I find myself in this situation. I, I don't use a mobile network on my laptop day to day. I haven't used it for years, but there was one occasion where I was stuck, I was in a bind, I didn't have Wi-Fi and I, and I had to get online. And so, you know, I went out and I was able to purchase a dongle and make it work. So even if you don't use this every day, it's great to know that it's there and it will it will work. And, you know, you've got easy toggles there just to turn the data on and off or to control data roaming um, or to change the network and so on. And, and that's, um, that's an important capability to have. And, that has now been enhanced for F35, so, so that's great. Okay, I know I'm running out of time here. I will try and leave time for questions. I think this might be my last screenshot. This is a new app for F35. We pre-install it by default. It's I think it goes in the utilities folder if you want to look for it and find it out. And this is this is connections. This is a new remote desktop client and um, you know the main the main idea behind this is that it's really easy to use um, so you know the idea is that you can just uh, put in an address and click connect and it will work it, it supports uh, the main uh, the main uh, protocols for remote desktops so we'll do rdp and it is vnc so you can use it to connect to uh, other Linux desktops, you can use it to connect to Windows desktops. And yeah, simple, easy to use, straightforward, uh, included in the box, ready to go. Um, you know, there are other remote desktop clients, some popular ones out there, you might be using one, you know, that's fine, that's great. Um, you know, uh, we perf that's, you know, that's, uh, good thing to have. Uh, the main difference is with connections is just that ease of use. You don't have to go through and um, fill in a load of configura configuration options uh, before you use a connection. And I think that's good and that what that is what makes it appropriate to be in the default app set. Uh, connections was actually previously, well, this functionality was previously part of boxes, which is principally for virtual machines. And um, Boxes takes that similar approach, right? You can just give it an ISO or tell it which OS you want to use and it will just create a VM for you. And this is the same for, for remote desktop. Uh, the reason this was split out into a separate app is that people weren't quite finding this in, in Boxes. People were thinking of Boxes as being just for VMs. So we had some great functionality there that people weren't aware of. And we're hoping that by splitting this out into a separate app, more people will become aware of it. 
more people will use it, and we can also develop this this uh, this feature set uh, independently a little bit more. So uh, watch this space for this, because I'm sure it will improve in future releases. Phew. OK, I, I've got a few minutes left. I've mostly been talking about UX changes. I'm, I'm a UX person. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, I'll, I'll mention some of the other technical changes that went into Workstation for F35. Um, and then Pipewire and Wire Plumber were a, a big focus for this release. Now, Pipewire first introduced into Fedora for F34. And you know, we all know that um, the multimedia stack, the audio stack, it can be a little bit fickle and a bit of few issues there. But it's, it's really come on very well and a uh, you know, very impressive development effort there just to resolve those little niggles that were there early on. Um, I think um, Pipewire had a really strong release for F35. And of course, we had a wire plumber. So uh, for those who don't know, you know, Pipewire is the kind of the server is the multimedia framework. The wire plumber is the session manager. So this is what interprets the policy for what happens when you have different uh, multimedia streams and different devices coming and going. And this is kind of exciting for Workstation. We're not really making use of it yet, but I'm sure we will in future releases. And it will enable us to have much smarter handling of multimedia devices and streams and so on. So you can imagine you know, the kind of behaviors that you have on your phone, right? Like an alarm goes off, so maybe we want to drop the volume of the music you're listening to, for example. Those kind of smarter behaviors, which Wire Plumber promises to make uh, pretty much easier to implement. Um, another big piece of news was the improved Wayland support that's come in uh, with the NVIDIA driver. Um, this has been a long time coming. Uh, those of us at Red Hat, we've been talking to NVIDIA about this for a long time. We have uh, a strong working relationship. Well, that's bearing fruit now. So for F35, I hope I'm getting this right. Um, I believe there is now a, uh, a Wayland session available when using the NVIDIA driver for the first time. I think that's off by default. You have to opt into it, but it is there. And we're hoping that this will, you know, this will grow and will be the start of something uh, really good because you know it's really important to be able to use Wayland, which is our you know, the default display server with the, the proprietary and the video driver. Uh, final thing I'll mention uh, very briefly is high resolution scroll wheel support. So this is kind of scroll wheels that uh, do, well, I'm scrolling now, aren't I? But I have lots of stops on them and we've got some initial support for that into the input. And I'm out of time, so I'm now gonna stop. I've been talking very quickly, I apologize. <laughs> Okay, uh, I see I'm on half an hour. There is one question. Um, do I have time to answer that or do I need to vacate the room and I can talk to Ricard afterwards? Okay, okay, we've got one question. Power save mode, is it possible to develop the tweaking of power settings even more? Uh, I guess that depends what kind of tweaking you mean. Um, maybe we could do some of a conversation about that. Um, there is some, there's a lot of discussion going on at the moment about battery charge levels. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is give people the ability to increase the, the longevity of their batteries by um, changing uh, the, the threshold to which you charge it. So. You know, right now we just charge up to 100% all the time and uh, we want to uh, introduce settings for that and behaviors for that to, to have a lower threshold. And again, that, that is similar to the, the power modes in that it's, it's a firmware setting. It's something that's provided to us by the, um, the hardware vendors. And it's often something that is available on Windows, often through 
software that the vendor provides themselves. And we're aiming to make sure that we have feature parity with that. Uh, so I don't know for certain, but there's a lot of design work conversation and conversation with the developers happening with that. And I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that we'll get that in the next release or two, but uh, no promises. I don't know if that's the kind of tweaking uh, you mean, Ricard. Uh, we can we can we can talk about that more. That'll be cool. Okay, I'm over time. Sorry if that was a lot of uh, talking and I went very quickly. Um, you know, we hope that you really love F35 Workstation. You know, a lot of work went into it. We're really happy with it. Uh, we'd love to hear feedback. We're already planning F36 Workstation. So, um, you know, if there's anything that anyone would like to see, let us know. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the party.